The following program is sponsored by the LGBT Community Center of Greater Cleveland. Welcome to Pride in the CLE on WKYC, presented by WKYC, Cleveland Public Theater, and the LGBT Community Center of Greater Cleveland. I'm your host, Shafia Dooley. As a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, many of us were given a startling glimpse into the disparities that many of our most marginalized groups face every day in America, especially the LGBTQ community. From social economic inequality to the ongoing fight for liberation, justice, and civil rights, tonight, we explore the work of the LGBT Community Center of Greater Cleveland and their mission to enrich the lives of LGBTQ plus community through advocacy, support, education, and celebration, and how that mission continues to fuel their annual Pride in the CLE March and Festival. As restrictions are slowly being lifted and we continue to work together to keep everyone safe, we're thankful that you're able to join us this evening as we honor the past while looking ahead to the future. We decided together that we wanted to become involved in gay activism, so we picked up a copy of High Gear at that time. We saw that that was the only thing happening. Gear started uh, as, as a community foundation, it really came out of CSU, but for me as a media guy, I love that they published that High Gear magazine. It really was so important to have that content because it was a link for people to the community when they couldn't get out and about. Many LGBT groups never had a place to have meetings and to meet each other and early gay centers were rental space. We wanted to have something permanent and we nobody would be kicked out of there or banished. The main purpose of the newspaper was both to give publicity to the center, to the idea of a center. The advertising was important. That's how we funded the gay hotline. And so where there was this emergency phone, there was a center. And whether it existed in people's apartments or in Tremont or on 29th Street or downtown, that's what the center was because that was the commitment to keep manning that phone because people were calling in saying, this is what I just experienced out on the streets. This is what's happening in my job. Where do I go to meet other people? Thank you for calling the LGBT Community Center. The center gives me a chance to be part of the community and I'm a richer man for it. I'm still answering phones and welcoming people in the door. I, I think that that's important um, to have a, a friendly face. I began my volunteer work at the height of the AIDS crisis. We had some doors on the street and that was about it. But it was a home. It was a space where people could be their authentic Selves. And then we moved. It was very exciting to have this big space in Gordon Square. It was at the time just beginning its renaissance. It was in the basement, which meant you were still not quite visible. I used to describe the climate as if the folks who had you know, worked so hard to keep the doors open, that they were sort of shell-shocked. They were in the basement and they were kind of hiding. There was a lock on almost everything. <laughs> there was a lock on the refrigerator. There was a lock on the supply cabinet. There was a lock on the front door. You had to be buzzed in. And I just remember being in that space. I remember how warm it was. I remember like that there was coffee and there was just this like very it felt like going to someone's living room and hanging out with my friends. What I was thinking is that I could take the skills that I had as a nonprofit executive and bring them to the center. And along with some really amazing people who wanted more for the center and more for the LGBTQ community, I was able to do that. There was even more excitement when we got to watch this building being built creating a warm, comfortable, safe space here. In each step, you can see how the community itself is more organized, better funded, and more open. One of my friends asked me once, do you think that we even need an LGBT center now? And I said to him, are you nuts? Of course we do. It's overwhelming, I must say, to see so much support for the LGBT 
NFT community today. Pride is about like you immediately walk in and there are there are your people and and they're saying hello, welcome. Cleveland Pride to me was always a, one of the most joyous days of the year. I just remember being like, oh my god, there are so many of us. There are so many more of just what I knew. The first Pride marches that we went to were relatively small, not more than 50 or certainly less than 100 people. First, we weren't even allowed to march in the street. We couldn't get a permit to have the street closed off, so we had to march on the sidewalk. Again, it all came down to the fact that uh, this was all relatively new and few people wanted to be exposed. They were much more political than today's. Today's are more celebrating being LGBT. Back then, we would hold signs that say, we demand our equal rights. We want job protections, the ability to live where we want to live. This is to increase visibility and uh, to provide a format to discuss some of the issues. It was a sign of the times, right? Especially in the early 90s, because we're still at the height of the AIDS epidemic. And we're still in this place where obituaries are being run every single day of the week and, and funerals are happening all the time. So they were a little bit of a mix of, of marches and celebratory floats and certainly drag queens as well. For so long, Columbus Pride was the only game in town. That's where everybody went. Right, so we started with in 89 and then the March in 90, and then people really started coming from all over in the 90s. And it became a hot place to be in Ohio. My first Pride though, that I got to work, that is probably like one of my favorite Prides ever. We had two full-time staff and two part-time staff and then me and then Tom Stiebel. So I was there at the crack of dawn with all these other people who all wanted to have this really amazing day and were willing to get there early and make it happen. It was, there's nothing like it. You ran into all your friends. I got more hugs on Pride Day than I ever get during the year and that really made the difference. A lot of people find their way at Pride as the first time that they, as an LGBTQ person, just had fun about and celebrated who they are without really understanding the history. That Pride started as a riot, right? That Pride is about resistance. That Pride is about visibility. That Pride is about the fact that it is not over. We're still fighting for rights and respect and protections, legal protections that as a marginalized group we need. This is a movement. This is not a moment. It happens every year and I'm glad for it, but we are building. This is a movement that is building toward our freedoms. I am from Cleveland, where I learned how to queer, where the fear of being anything other than myself was a greater fear than hiding my truth. I am from pride, where my chosen family sees me as whole in their eyes. We are rated P for proud, rousing and all encompassing, never neglecting how we show up in this world, I am from by, in the way that Robin Oates defined. We are not enigmas or outsiders. We be the biggest tribe in this alphabet mafia. I am from aces and NBs, solid foundation for my BBs. When you see me, you see them. I am from disruptors and agitators, rainbow flags and leather, braving 216 weather, can't nothing stop this shine. I am from queer elders, the sage bearers, knowledge havers, the sacrifices made I benefit from to this day. I am from queer Cleveland, beautifully complicated and underrated. BIFC isn't just a statement, it's a rally and scream, more than four letters, a come true dream. I am from pride in the C-L-E. Peace, y'all. Hi, everyone. I'm Goldnar Farasta, Director of Programs at the LGBT Community Center of Greater Cleveland. And I'm Ileana Turan, Director of Development at the Center. The last year has been full of difficulties and challenges, but with your support, we were able to pull together to continue to provide vital programs and services to those that needed them and to make sure that everybody was able to stay informed and connected. But we couldn't do it without the support of our entire community. That's why tonight we're launching our official Give Out Day campaign. 
So please, grab your phones and text PRIDE to 216-284-3657 or go to lgbtcleveland.org and click Donate to Give. Thank you, everyone. And happy, happy Pride! Pride. I heard the words that, you know, pride wasn't going to happen, and I said, I need to, we need to meet. I was there when they canceled it. I was in the room with Phyllis and one other person when they said we are not doing pride this year. This can't happen. What are we saying if we just had the RNC here, we just had the gay games here, and you're telling me we can't manage a, a Pride event, an event that has been going on for years? The community wanted Pride to happen, the community needed Pride to happen, and the community made Pride happen. For every organization that existed to serve LGBTQ people here in Greater Cleveland, a representative showed up. And that's how important Pride is to our community. The city heard the outrage from the community when that happened and stepped up and made the process a lot easier. And it was in that room that we decided to call it Pride in the CLE. It was in that room that we decided it was going to be a march and not a parade. It was the most stressful 13 days of my entire life. It was gonna be meaningful and it was gonna be great and it was what the community needed. I'll never forget marching across the bridge that year. Who's Pride? But it was so grassroots, like, we had a banner that we had to get made really quickly and it was not the cutest banner in the entire world, but we got it made quickly and I got to hold it and lead this march. And we never imagined that we would look back over the uh, Detroit Superior Bridge and see a sea of LGBT people coming down the bridge. Yeah, that's one of the, the amazing surprises of our, our lives. It was exactly what Pride is. Pride has always been about a group of people saying that we demand to be visible. From that, we have been able to make Pride more inclusive. I think the center really took a step forward beyond just an LGBTQ organization and really leaning into being a social justice organization. I really do think that we're seen as a leader, a leading organization being able to provide the most comprehensive services that exist at the moment. And it's quite the story and it's part of our history here in Cleveland because pride absolutely matters to greater Clevelanders. We came out of 2019 with the biggest pride we've ever seen and we had grand plans and then COVID hit. We couldn't have the festival that we'd promised people and that really hurt. But the community needed something, and that was a lesson that we had taken away from 2016. It was innovative, it was groundbreaking, and it was also centered in the community and the needs of the community. So it was accessible, so people could watch from their homes, people could watch from the sidewalk, people could watch the live streams that we had, or they could drive in their cars or ride in a friend's car and participate that way. <laughs> And we've been really proud to look around the state of Ohio and see many other Pride Rides this year. And I hope that it's something that's continued every year. It was such a heartwarming and warming scene to see the community reminding members of the LGBTQ community that we're loved and we're, we're valued and we're welcomed.
much work to be done and sometimes that can be overwhelming. It's about being curious about the ways that laws are made, um, the ways that policies are made, like how things run and not being afraid to ask questions and to push back on things when they are not serving everyone that they need to serve. We are who we are at all times and we can't just be black in these spaces or be a woman in these spaces or be trans in these spaces. We deserve to be able to be all of those things all of the time and never have to hide any part of ourselves. I think a lot of it starts with those of us who have power and who are sitting at the table to look at the table and say, where is it that we're creating more space? And I think what a lot of people don't want to do, which is what is so needed, is to step the hell back from the table uh, and create more space. We're always going to have to be uh, fighting for uh, gay rights because there are always going to be these people who want to roll back all of these things right down to just uh, gay marriage. But I do think that uh, we haven't changed as many minds and hearts as we need to because it's really how people interact with you that matters and if they continue to disparage you or degrade you um, you're going to fight back we're never going to go back to the 80s the, the way things were then we're never going to go back to even the early 90s where it took a horrific pandemic to make people see folks in the LGBTQ community to really see us. At the same time, we're seeing this horrific attack on, on trans children, for, of all things. What it also tells all of us in the LGBT community is that we've made incredible gains and we are so strong that the only strategy for people who would attack us is those who are the most, most vulnerable. We can just push all of those barriers out of the way so that the, the youth especially can lead us to that next frontier, whatever that is. We continue to thrive, that we continue to build coalition, build trust, keep our allies close, educate those and inform those who would think to do us harm, protect ourselves, that we continue to support that we continue to advocate, that we continue to educate, and that we continue to celebrate who we are. What a magical evening. We want to thank our sponsors for tonight's event, WKYC, Cleveland Public Theater, and the LGBT Community Center of Greater Cleveland, and many others. Remember to visit lgbtcleveland.org for more information and for ways to get involved. Tonight's proceeds support programming and services at the LGBT Community Center of Greater Cleveland and pride in the CLE for future generations to come. Thank you for tuning in to our Pride in the CLE on WKYC event, and we look forward to seeing you again next year. Under the sun.